Poinsettia production is a, uh, about a 16 week process from plugs to final finished production. It will depend, however, upon your sale date and you'd work from your sale date backwards to acquire the date that you would need to purchase and start your plugs. Plugs will come in in a tray and they'll need to be watered and cared for uh, very carefully. Once you have your plugs in, you'll then want to um, pot them up. And what we use for potting up our poinsettias is the sale container that it will be finished in. For what we have, we have uh, three different sizes. We have a six inch container, we have a seven and a half inch container, and then we have a 16 inch basket. Now for um, the six inch container, we just put one plant. For the seven and a half, we'll put two plants. And then for the 16 inch basket, we'll put anywhere from three to five plants. Depends on the variety. When you've decided on your sale size containers, you'll then want to go ahead and uh, get your media ready for potting. What we use is a uh, ProMix. And this ProMix is mainly a mix of peat moss, sphagnum peat moss. It has vermiculite, um, perlite, macro and micronutrients as well that will sustain the plugs until your first fertilization. This smaller container is a four inch container and we use this for when we pinch our plants. Poinsettias are a southern hemisphere plant and since we're in the northern hemisphere here in Virginia, we need to uh, supplement the lighting needs for poinsettias to be able to produce them correctly. We first implement a night lighting system that will increase the amount of hours of light. So you're making the light as if it was a long day situation. What this does is it encourages and promotes the growth of the vegetative part of the plant and you're giving it a little bit more time to grow to a more mature size before you get ready to pinch. What this looks like is overhead lighting of a mixture of incandescent and fluorescent lights. We put them over the center of each table and we would increase the amount of uh, lighting at the end of the day. So the night lighting would come on somewhere around uh, 10 p.m. at night to 2 a.m. in the morning and it's set on a timer so it does this on its own. That process will continue for approximately four to five weeks and it'll depend on where you are, your location. But once that is finished then you can switch over to the black cloth. The purpose of the black cloth is to, once you have your vegetative growth mature, you want to then initiate flowering. To initiate the flowering, you need to provide at least 12 hours of complete and total darkness. If you don't have complete and total darkness, um, the flowers will not initiate. Um, the easiest way to do this is with a black cloth, and that's what we do here. We literally pull the shade around the plants. We turn off all parking lot lights or any indoor lights or anything that would allow any kind of, even if it's a small amount of light in, um, we'll make sure that that's all um, blocked out by the cloth. Initially, we start with 12 hours of black cloth, and then we will increase it as we continue in the production to about 15 hours. Um, once you reach 15 hours, you should see a uh, bract color change. And um, depending on your variety, it will be a different color and it may take longer or shorter for you to see the bract color change. An important part of your poinsettia production is going to be your watering and fertilizing. Uh, these will be done together ideally at the same time. Um, what you would do is you would consider what kind of irrigation system that you have, whether it's a sub-irrigation, a drip irrigation, or hand watering, 
And based upon that and the size of your plants at the time of the fertilization, you will determine the parts per million um, that you would need for your plants. If you have sub-irrigation or drip irrigation, your parts per million is going to be lower because it's a continual system of fertilization and watering. Um, for us, we have hand watering, which we can then apply a higher parts per million. So for us, we generally start off with a 150 parts per million solution. Uh, based on our fertilizer an an analysis. So that's about two weeks after you have potted up your plugs. After that, for about two more weeks, you would jump up to 200 parts per million. And that will really increase the vegetative part of your plant. Once you have reached the uh, bract coloring stage of your plants, you can then up your fertilizer parts per million again to the top tier of about 300 parts per million. For the final finishing stage of the blooming and bract coloring, you want to drop off your fertilizer because you can end up with a fertilizer burn which will ruin your bracts that you're working so hard to produce. So for this final stage, you want to drop off to about 100 parts per million and you can, depending on the variety, either do that once a week at 100 parts per million or you can switch to every other week of about 150 parts per million, but it's going to be in that range. Also during this process of uh, caring for your plants, you want to think about the culture of your plants. Poinsettias are very susceptible to root rots um, due to poor spacing, um, over fertilizing, over watering. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're caring for them well. Uh, one thing that we do is early on after potting, we will apply Terrachlor. It's a powder and it's mixed with water and then applied to the soil as, as a fungicide drench. Another thing that we find we have issues with is pests. So uh, we apply two to three times during the production. Marathon is a granular insecticide and we use that for white fly control. It's a systemic and it's applied to the soil and watered in to activate the chemical. And then it will evenly distribute throughout the media. So you want to make sure that you're checking your plants on a regular basis for any kind of plant debris, leaves, um, stems, or anything that has died. Um, these things are homes for pests. So a great way to just make sure that you're, you're reducing the risk of having them is to just make sure you have clean areas, remove dead plant tissue, um, and you want to space your plants appropriately. Spacing of your plants is something that you're going to have to do at least twice. Your initial spacing can be quite close because the plants relative to the size of the container are small. But once you get about halfway through your production, you're going to find that the leaves of the plants will start to touch. When this happens, you want to go ahead and re-space your whole crop. And what that does is it allows for air circulation and ventilation through and in between the plants so that you're not getting any stagnant air and you're getting even drying of the media in the containers and you're having a space for the heat in the greenhouse to move through effectively. We will pinch our plants. And pinching is literally what it sounds like. You are removing a part of the plants and what that does is it encourages growth below the pinch area. Um, this will make a bushier plant, um, a better looking plant, and it will also allow for more brack coloring. So you'll have a plant that just looks better and has more color on it. Um, we have an example here of uh, a, a plant that is pinched and a plant that is not pinched. So you know, you can see there are some differences. Obviously, this plant right here that's not been pinched is taller. It has less bracts that are colored, and it also has one main stalk, 
whereas this plant is a fuller, bushier plant and it has more coloring and it has multiple main stems. It's just a more attractive plant and this is something that's going to be more sellable. This is what um, we're looking for as far as a final sale size. So as far as pinching, you want to make sure that you have a clean sterilized pair of shears. Um, you'll also want to have um, a media ready for them. You'll want to have a container that has water so that you can um, keep your plants from wilting. And then you'll want to have um, your, an area that's clean to go ahead and do this in. So what you would ideally do is you would look at your plant and what you're looking for is the main stalk that's where you're going to take the pinch from. So on this plant right here, we have the main stalk right here. And normally when we take a pinch, it's going to be somewhere between three and five inches, but it can depend on your variety. Some varieties will have different node and internode spacings. So you really have to go by the inches, not the nodes. So for this right here, we would go ahead and probably make a pinch cut somewhere in this area right here. And again, what that would look like is you would just take your pruning shears and you would just go ahead and make a cut that's close to this node. So you'd make a clean cut right here. You would then take your cutting, your pinch from that, and you place it in water. And you'd go through and you do all your plants like this. You would take that container with the water and all your pinches. You'd go over to your area where you're going to um, put them in a rooting hormone. Um, we use a hormone one here. It's a um, hormone that increases the production of roots. And it's just a very fine white powder. You would just dip that in there and then you would go ahead and have your tray already filled with your uh, media for your pinches and then you would space them accordingly, again, leaving a little bit of space so that your leaves aren't touching. And then you put them under the mist system. And for the purposes of our pinches, we actually use a 50-50 mix of a sphagnum moss and perlite. And what this does is the perlite uh, adds aeration and drainage so that you're not having too much water. And the sphagnum moss has a natural fungicide in it that will help to protect the cuttings from, from a rot. So once you've got that all set, again, you just put it under your mist. And then in approximately a month, you will go ahead and check these. And you'll see that there are roots on the bottom. You'll have some that will not root, um, but the majority of them do root. Uh, but don't be discouraged if you don't get all of them to root because that's the case always. You're not going to get all of them to root. Temperature is another important aspect um, that you need to consider when growing your poinsettia crop. Uh, poinsettias require a temperature that has to at least be above 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, anything below that and the plants, they just won't do well. Um, ideally for a day temperature, you would have somewhere between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And for night temperature, you would want to be around the 60 to 65 range. Um, and these are true for most of the production time. And once you get closer to your sale date, you want to take into uh, consideration a few things um, about your plants. If the flowers are, are starting to bloom, you want to be able to slow your crop down. And you can do this by reducing your temperatures overall. And what that will do is it'll just slow the plant down. And you can do this for, you know, the last two weeks of your production if you're finding that your plants are just um, continuing faster than you'd like. And um, at that point, you could then reduce the temperature um, overall to somewhere around um, 55 to 60 degrees. And that should be able to hold you till your sale date.